I'd like to take a moment of your time for the video starts uh, to uh, ask you if you like the content of my channel. I try to keep it as diverse as I can and cover a wide base of topic areas. Uh, please subscribe, okay? Hit the subscribe button. And also with all of this uh, weapons testing and proving out, uh, any support you can give uh, will help me in my endeavors and my future projects. Um, and you can send your support. My one goal was to get a dollar from every subscriber a month through Patreon. Um, that hasn't worked out well. And uh, down in the description box is a link to the Patreon uh, site where you can sign up for a monthly uh, support donation. Or if you don't like that and just want to send some support, a one-time deal, there's also a link to a PayPal pool where you can also send support. And any support you send me will be deeply appreciated and help me to continue uh, keeping the content of my channel diversified. Thank you. In this video, we're going to review a... Uh, 1911 A1 pistol. It's imported by SDS Industries. Uh, basically, the gun is made in Turkey. Uh, okay, they had different names, different makers. This gun is not anything new. I've went through and seen a bunch of videos on YouTube, and this company's been making this gun for a while. But it came in like a blued with uh, blued steel with uh, wooden grips and all this other stuff. But I guess now with the popularity of mill surplus in that, and this also falls under what is called the budget 1911A1s, because the price of this is under $400, okay? And uh, usually any 1911 style pistol made by a reputable dealer, because it's not a polymer gun, it's all a solid steel construction and a frame in that. Um, generally, they start running at around six, seven hundred and up, depending on what you're getting, who made it, and how fancy you want to go, up into like three to four thousand dollars for some custom-made guns. So, those of us that want a mill surplus gun uh, right out of the box that looks like a World War II pistol, uh, this is what we're going to review here: this SDS 1911. And like I said, they, they, a lot of people tout this as a budget 1911 because the sub $400 price is kind of hard to beat. Actually, this one come out to, with tax and everything, $375 for this gun. And believe me, it is worth it. So this is the box it comes in. Packaging is pretty simple. Cardboard box. You get uh, the pistol, one mag, okay? And you get some cleaning things and uh, a manual, and that's it in the box. So packaging isn't fancy, no hard case, nothing, just a cardboard box. All right, so what do we get? We get a 1911A1 Parkerize. Uh, like I said, they made these blue with wooden grips look more like a civilian style model. Um, and we'll get a close-up. You see the serial number and uh, the importer, SDS, Knoxville, Kentucky. And then on this side, 1911, A1, I guess it says model, yep, Army. I don't know if they make them in Navy or whatever. The differences ain't there. And then there's uh, the different makers in there. Um, it's Zig and TS, okay, are the uh, manufacturing names you come under. You'll find some of these with that Zig name, uh, whatever, over the years. And they've been making this for quite a while, but this particular model is a pretty faithful uh, representation, you know, with the Parkerized finish of a wartime production GI 45. Okay, 
So if you're in the market for something like that and don't want to spend a ton of money, this is the gun. Now, as with, and it comes, like I said, one mag. Right. So, mag's out. Okay. All right, pistol comes with one seven round mag. Parkerized, and it is stamped 45 ACP on it. And it has two little weep holes there in the bottom. So basically, it's your standard 1911 pistol, same controls, uh, single action only. Okay, we'll clear the weapon. And anybody familiar with it, there's your slide release your safety on the one side to be used by a right-handed man. So you got your safe, single action, okay. You have your half cock, like it should be on there. The half cock, some people like to carry it in half cock with safety off and around in the chamber, then pull it back in single action to use it. Grip safety. There is no magazine safety on the 1911 on this side. It's all basically simple. Now, like I said, what separates it from the 1911 and 1911 A1 is this uh, scallop cutout. But the weird thing about this is an A1 should have a wider on this uh, safety beaver grip. This one does not and gives you hammer bite. That was a problem with the 1911. What is hammer bite? Well, you have to move the camera around. When I grip the pistol down in there, the hammer in that comes to the point where it pinches the skin on my hand in full recoil. When it recoils back and the gun is recoiling, that little area in here, see where that hammer's close? My skin gets up underneath there and that hammer comes back and pinches my hand. Okay, that's the only thing about this gun I don't like. All right, so thing about it, we have the standard sights, military sights, you know, just the old fashioned little round nub, Pretty low profile, simple rear sight, which you can drift this for windage. All right. This is a no frills pistol. Nothing special about it. Uh, a lot of custom guys like to scallop the ejection port or open up the inject, uh, ejector port here uh, on the slide. None of that. Also, the magazine well is... Uh, just a plain magazine well, because like this 45 here has a uh, flared magazine well to aid in reloading. You see the little chamfer on the mag well, where this does not have it much like a GI pistol. And another thing, this has a lanyard loop here on the bottom of the grip stuck in there, which some guns don't. Uh, lanyards in the U.S. military are more used for like a ceremonial purpose. And uh, the only time you do that is in a dress uniform. And that's why, I guess, the uh, U.S., I don't know if a lanyard loop was standard on any 45s. They used to put them on the bottom of the magazine, like where these two holes are. They used to put a loop on the bottom of the mag. So that way you could have a lanyard uh, on your uniform. So all in all, it's a pretty straightforward 45 uh, pistol. And it comes apart just like the normal gun. I'm not going to field strip it for you because with my hand it's going to take too long. But I'm going to take this apart and show you the only thing that is different internally about this gun. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I did not field strip this because with my hand it'd take me forever and I can't hold it in front of the camera correctly, but it comes apart just like, you know, your standard 1911. 
no surprise is not different. Um, as far as the machining in that, it's all very good. This pistol is tight. I mean, the, the slide fit to the frame, the bushing, everything, it, it's really tight. I can feel it in my hands. There's no movement, no play. Okay, how with the rattle test. This gun, the tolerances are tight on it. This gun has a real nice tight lockup on it. Now, the one thing about this that is different from anything I've seen is here in the throat area. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this has a huge wide throat cut in there on the bottom here. Um, it's almost like half the barrel is throated out. And that used to be a custom job to get that done. What a normal throat looks like, I'll show you on this one, is this here. As you notice, this is the throat's pretty narrow. It's not that wide. And it you know comes down to the feed ramp. That's kind of like a standard throat. This is on a much older gun. It's a 30-year-old gun. But that's what your standard throat is. This gun has a much wider throat in here. Like I said, that chamfer is way bigger. It does marry up well, and what that will do, the big thing about this, is the reliability of feeding different ammo. There's people out there shooting hollow points and that with this gun, and it does not stop. I had zero failures. The next video is going to be me shooting it. There were zero failures with this gun, using even weird soft point, hollow point ammo and that other stuff. And what it is, is the throat. That's the key. The feed ramp's fairly well polished, but uh, this gun functioned flawlessly. It was tight, it was accurate, and uh, not a single problem. Also, as you can see on this gun, uh, and this is all using stock things, springs and that. And this 45, I went and put it an oversized ejector in here. This here was added on. And as you can see, this front end sticks out. I don't know if you can see it. A little bit different than this. This one here uh, does not protrude as far. Now this was considered something to help with functioning, but this gun after the modification pretty much tears up the brass because I think what it's doing, it's kicking the uh, shell out or having pressure where it's springing back and getting caught up in the slide. So that was a modification I did myself when I was trying to be a pistol smith back in the old days, but uh, unnecessary. Over the years, there have been several brands of these guns made in different countries that have come in. And all have had uh, reliability problems of some sort. And basically, the thing was, uh, the minute you got one of these foreign guns, you change the recoil spring, and you change the spring in the firing pin. And uh, I think that was about it. And then sometimes the extractor, you'd put a enhanced extract, extractor in there also. Were some standard modifications. This gun, even though it is a foreign made gun, functioned flawlessly right out of the box. So, get her back together and conclude this. Alright. So whether you're looking just for an inexpensive 1911 style pistol or if you're looking for something that is a damn close copy to what was issued in World War II in a GI grade gun, uh, this gun by SDS is hard to beat. $375. It has one custom feature to throat. Other than that, it's all stock like the old military guns, plastic grips, sights, everything. Um, out of the box, I, I think this gun's a winner. You can't beat it for this price. The quality of the finish, the fit, uh, the gun is tight, the gun is well made. Uh, you know, just your basic, your basic 
plain gun, military style weapon. Uh, magazine goes in and out, drops out, drops free. Um, I, it's If you're interested in this, I'd jump on it, get one. I mean, because that's a deal you can't beat. I mean, the Chinese made a copy about, and that was 30 years ago, and it was priced around 300 and some dollars. And they weren't bad guns. You know, if you go by the prints and you make it to the correct tolerance out of good material, you know, the guns is going to work the same anywhere. But, um, yes, that's my review on it. And if you got the opportunity or you're in the market for one, I'd get one.